morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining today's session. And uh, we're um, pleased to have you here to help you and walk you through uh, some of WSO2's latest features and uh, uh, information about our Identity Server 7.0 release. Um, Godwin, next slide. So walking you through today, the conversation is uh, mainly my colleague Godwin, who's from the Solutions Architecture team and who has um, uh, quite, a, quite an amount of experience in the identity space. And uh, he will be basically taking you and doing most of the talking today and uh, happy to field any and all of your questions as well. And of course, my myself, my name is Sulakshan Das but uh, I'm fondly known as Sula because the name is a bit difficult to uh, remember, let alone pronounce. I'm an associate lead account manager here at WSO2, and I've been with the company for almost five years. So if you do have any requirements uh, with regards to your IAM needs or your CIM needs and you need some support, do reach out to us uh, either on LinkedIn or through a contact us from on the website. I would be more than happy to uh, get in touch with you and, and help you with any of your identity needs as well. Moving on. Uh, of course, the hero of the conversation today is uh, Identity and Access Management product. And just wanted to take a quick minute before we jump into the actual uh, uh, meat of the conversation is just to understand a bit about how our Identity and Access Management can be, con can be consumed. So as you all know, traditional versions of the Identity Server, which is the run it yourself or the software version of our product is available where you can, uh, you can take the product, you can deploy it within your environments and run it as an on-prem solution. Of course, this can be deployed on your own cloud infrastructure as well and run it and manage it and host it by yourself. Now, if you're looking, if, you're, if your business is in the, in, in the focus of going into a cloud-first strategy and wants to offload all of this operational um, complexity, you can go into our multi-tenanted SaaS offering, which is Asgardio. This is basically a plug and play solution where you would sign up with WSO2 in either a pay by G format or even in an enterprise format, depending on your on your uh, enterprise needs. And then you can start consuming the product immediately. Sometimes you may have an edge case, which is that you want to have that operational complexity offloaded, but you still need to have segregation and you need to have a single tenant approach to this deployment. And that is also capable uh, through the identity and access management product via our private identity cloud offering in which WSO2 spins up, maintains and provides to you a dedicated single tenanted deployment of our WSO2 identity and access management solution. So depending on what your business needs are, depending on what your, what your operational complexity or simplicity, simplicity is, there is a method of com consuming WSO2 in these products that you see here. Of course, the, the product itself in its availability is, is uh, in parity across all three formats. There is nothing that's superior to the other. And that will be where Godwin will take over and sort of explain to you. Um, just before that, a couple of housekeeping rules. If you do have any questions that you would like answered, please use the Q&A format, uh, that is, the Q&A tab that is there within the webinar to raise your questions and we're more than happy to answer them. Additionally, if you would like to interact and maybe have a conversation, we are more than happy to encourage that. Please use the raise hand feature and we can unmute you and we can have a conversation within the within this forum itself. The last question, the last uh, housekeeping rule is that if you do have such questions, let's leave it for the end of the session where we can get through the 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 main parts of the presentation and the demos, and we can then use the remaining time to discuss and sort of uh, have an analysis of any of your problems or questions or um, feature clarifications that you may have. So without further ado, Godwin Amila. Right. Thank you, Sula. So Su Sula touch base the, uh, you know, the different uh, deployment options available uh, with the IAM uh, product stack. So the today session is mainly on the identity service 7.0 uh, release. So which is our most uh, powerful and the developer friendly release uh, we have done. And um, 
we have introduced uh, some of the new key areas to the product uh, and that is the area we are going to basically discuss in this webinar and, and planning to do live demo on that one. Um, and, and as Sula mentioned, if you all have any questions, please raise, we can, we can discuss those things um, at the end of the session, right? So these are the key areas. So we have done, uh, you know, the, some optimizations uh, related to the developer experience, and we are going to discuss on this side. And, um, and some of the passwordless login experience. So passwordless is something, you know, the evolving area. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of traction on this particular area. So we have, you know, they in, enhanced the password lo uh, passwordless login experience. And then we can, you can see how it is working with the live demos. And, um, uh, and how to do, uh, you know, the authentication browserless using the API driven, especially when, when it comes to the mobile application side, um, we, we, we can discuss you know, the, that area as well. The fourth one is um, purely on the B2B. So if you are building a B2B application, how do you provide the identity and access management side uh, for this particular B2B application? So we, we are going to discuss that area with using the some of the uh, sample use case. And the last one is the API resource authorization. If you, are, if you are going to provide the, you know, the API resource authorization or you can provide the, you know, the, the, the UI uh, resource authorization as well along with this particular feature, we are going to discuss this. Right. So develop, uh, optimize develop experience. So what are those uh, things? So if you, if you have used uh, WS2 identity server previously, so the left side one is our old uh, developer console, and we have introduced, uh, you know, the new lightweighted, uh, faster developer console using the new React-based approach. So that is the console that you can see in the right side. And uh, we have given some of the other developer experience features, and we have introduced um, you know, the templates and also the connection um, where we can discuss these things in the demo, uh, which I will show in the, you know, the couple of minutes. Um, and uh, when, especially when you are, you know, the integrate in your application, you need to, uh, you know, the build your uh, login journey for the application. We have introduced some of the UI orchestration, uh, UI where how you can basically easily uh, uh, define the login journey of the user uh, using the UI. Uh, that is something we can discuss. And the other thing is the branding. So this is uh, uh, one of the area we had uh, some problem uh, previously when where we, when you need to do branding where you need to do some you know the um, changes on the JSP files or maybe CSS etc. Uh, but we have taken that particular branding capability to the UIs where you can do the branding from the co developer console itself, which will be applicable for the all the end user facing applications and also the uh, email templates as well. Right. So, right. So, Let's let's see. Um, so how I'm trying to uh, do the webinar is uh, whenever you know the whatever the you know the areas I'm going to showcase at the same time. So then you will feel how it is working. Let me jump into the uh, demo. Um, so I'm going to log in into the developer console now. Right. So this is the. Uh, you know, the identity server developer console. Let me log in using the admin credential. So this is the new developer console. You can see that there, there is a, you know, the home screen where you can quick access to some of the, you know, the key areas like applications, uh, you know, the users, connections, et cetera. And if you go into the application section, we have introduced new templates where developer can easily pick based on their requirement. Um, as example, let's say a developer needs to 
integrate their single page application, then they can select the single page application. Then underneath identity server, create all the required uh, single page specific configurations where a developer doesn't need to take care of those things, right? So these are some of the templates we have introduced. This particular area probably will improve in future by adding new templates into the product, right? And the other thing is um, the connections. So these connections you can use in the application login flow. These There are different type of connections available like uh, passwordless login, uh, password lo uh, passwordless connections, MFA connections, social logins, et cetera, where you can search from here. So you can use these options uh, in, the, in the login flow of the applications, right? And the other thing is you can create new connections as well, especially when it comes to the social logins and also the different identity provider side where you can configure those connections here by providing the required URL, client ID, client secret, etc. Then you can use this connection under the application. So if I go into the application section again, these are some of the uh, pre-created applications where I am going to use in the, you know, the demonstration. So if I go into the PEDDES application, if I go into the login flow, so this is the basically the, the, the UI, the orchestration UI where you can define the login journey. Um, of the application. So see, let's see. So this is the basically a very simple uh, login flow where user can, user has the one step, which is the username password. But we can, uh, you know, the increase the uh, you know the complexity or uh, or the or the login experience by adding different uh, function lead. As example, let's say if you need to add a different sign in option other than the uh, the username password. As an example, let's say you need to add pass keys. Um, here, so then you can add a different option as like this, um, and and also if you need to add multiple steps like multi-factor authentications, then you can uh, click here and add another option here. Let's say maybe a TOTP, right? So basically, you can define the uh, uh, end user experience, uh, login experience using this UI. Uh, by by adding these, uh, you know, the whatever the connections that we have uh, defined here, right? So the other area is there are some of the predefined flows are available. So if you click on this particular tab, you can see some of the predefined flows. Some of them are basic login flows. If you look at here, you can add basic login flows like username, password, and also multi-factor login, password login, social login, et cetera, where you can quickly click here and add it into the login flow. And there are conditional flows as well. So conditional flows are more like a dynamic authentication, which basically change the login dynamically based on different contexts, right? So it may be based on the ACR, IP addresses, maybe users, groups, roles, et cetera, right? So if I, if I uh, you know, the open up, um, let's say one of these, um, the, the conditional flow, uh, role login, if I add it, so it will automatically populate, uh, you know, the required configurations and if you go into the conditional authentication section, it will create the basically the required script to, to basically work this particular login flow. They, this is what we call it, it as the conditional authentication script, adaptive authentication script, where it has the logic how to basically dynamically handle the login flow. In this particular logic, the uh, basically the idea is, uh, sorry, I, I it's, it's um, kick off because I didn't change it. I will edit it again. So if you look at uh, here, the logic keys, if a user login from either admin or manager, then you have to basically do the step up authentication from here, right? So 
the, these are the areas some of the uh, you know the uh, we, we have increased the developer experience and i'm not going to save this for now i will uh, go back and another area is um, the brand in which i mentioned so if you go under the branding section here where you can do the you know the branding from the ui itself where there are different type of options available. Uh, there are layouts you can select based on your preference and also theming and, 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 and there are different uh, multiple options like how to change the images, color palettes, footer, fonts, headers, etc. So this is a, some of the very simple uh, theming that we have done uh, to demonstrate this feature. And uh, if, if you click on this six screens, you can see how this theming is applicable for different uh, type of end user facing applications. So if you look at the SMS OTP, this is how the SMS OTP UI is look like. And, um, and, and password recovery, it looks like this. And also the, let's say sign up, look like this, right? So then the other thing is when you, when you do the branding here, the same branding will be applicable for the email template as well. There are multiple email um, templates available in the in the product based on the features that you are going to use. As example, if you need to recover the password using the email verification, the the product will send the email and and you can change you can change those you know the email templates as well from here, right? So these are some of the developer. Um, uh, you know, the experience uh, optimizations that we have done. Uh, let me go back to the uh, presentation and, uh, you know, the move ahead with the other areas. Okay. Right. So, so the other area is the password log, uh, login experience. So, which is uh, mainly, which I mentioned actually, um, uh, we we have added uh, you know the the e email OTP SMS OTP pass uh, uh, pass key and also the uh, the e magic link authentication as the passwordless uh, login experience. Let's see how it is working in the product and how you can easily add them into the uh, you know the UIs as well. So let me open again the uh, developer console. Here is the um, so if I go back to the uh, application section, and if I use the same application, which is the pet desk application, under the login flow, if you click here at sign in option, there are multiple passwordless authentication option. As example, you can use the pass keys. You can, if you want to add more, you can add it, it as well, like, as example, magic link and, uh, uh, email OTP, etc., and also you can add the SMS OTP as well. So where you can update it, this will applicable for the this uh, you know the pet desk application. So let's see how it is uh, you know the visible and how you can basically use the pass key experience in the application side. So this is the sample application um, hosted in my local machine. So if I try to access this, you can see whatever the, you know, the passwordless login option we added, you can see, and also you can see the branding as well, where we show uh, in the, in the previous uh, section, right? So in, in, then you can basically the, you know, the select one of the passwordless login option from here, as example, I will go ahead with the pass key and uh, then I'm, you know, the, uh, using my, you know, the, the fingerprint in the machine and easily can log into the application using the, you know, the passwordless login. Okay. Right. So that is the passwordless experience. Um, if I uh, go back to the uh, uh, slide deck, Yeah, so this is the sample application which I demonstrated, uh, you know, the how the passwordless login experience works. This is the sample application and it is which is authenticated and integrated with the identity server. Right. So the the next section is um, API driven app native browserless authentication. So 
So the uh, if you look at uh, there's a lot of demand uh, from the mobile developers and also the from the end users to have a native login experience in the application, especially when it comes to the mobile apps. When the user try to log in with the browser and there's a lot of disconnection with the native experience. If I if I show how how that works, you know, they currently with the browser redirection. So I'm playing a video. So see that uh, you, uh, it, it, this is the native experience, but when the user try to log in, it will go into the browser, which is basically disconnect the experience where user needs to enter the credentials and also the whatever the multi-factor authentication in the browser. Once the authentication completed in the browser, then user redirect back to the, you know, the native application. So there's a lot of friction here and, and there's a lot of demand on this area, especially from the mobile developers. And, um, and there is a, a, a sort of a movement and a community discussion in the open, you know, the OC, O2 uh, working group as well to provide the native experience, um, you know, the without compromise in the security. And there's a draft uh, specification also they are how to how to provide the authentication for the first party application authentication right um yeah so let me go to the next slide so this is um how the uh, this particular authentication happens um for the in the sample application we have a sample application um the, which is to you know the replicate and the, you know the emulate this particular how how api based authentication works uh, which is a mobile application it is integrated with the identity server using this particular api and uh, let's see how it is working okay so going out from this and um, so this is the mobile app so this mobile app is basically um, integrated with the identity server uh, using the uh, this api based authentication so i will show how this uh, um, you know the configuration works first if I, if i go back to the application section um, there's a mobile application you can see so how you can create is uh, there is a different templates available for the mobile application. You can use that. And uh, this is already created application. So if you go here, uh, you know, it will automatically create uh, the, the required uh, grant types, etc. The important thing is uh, you need to go into the um, advanced section. You have to enable this uh, API native authentication uh, to to have the you know the native experience and native API authentication with this particular application, and uh, if you need to enable the advanced security, there are uh, app attestations as well where you can enable the Android or Apple uh, app attestation if it is required in this particular sample application. We haven't you know the enabled it at the moment. Okay, right. So let me open up the. Uh, you know the mobile app and um, right so if i try to log in like you can see you can see the login experience is available in the native application itself itself which is there is no any browser redirection where user can basically enter the credentials in the in the application itself i'm going to enter the one of the sample uh, username password i have in the identity server setup right so if i log in user can log in into the application um, uh, with the native experience right so and uh, the if you if i add multiple uh, you know the multi factor authentications uh, etc and also the adaptive authentications uh, into this application that also will be applicable uh, for the application if you use this native API authentication mechanism, right? Right, so 
let's see how this is working underneath a uh, little bit of a technical uh, detail uh, uh, to share. So I have a Postman collection to showcase how this is working underneath, right? So if you can remember that uh, when you click on the Get Started screen in the, in the mobile app, what happened is the application sent this particular API request to the identity server, which is quite similar to the uh, authorization code grant. Uh, and, and only difference is uh, you need to pass the response mode uh, parameter as the direct and you can basically call it as a, you know, the back channel mode through the APIs. You don't need to basically call it as a browser redirection, right? So if I send this request to the identity server, you are getting the response. So this is the response the app gets. There are, there are some of the uh, important information I need to highlight. This flow ID is something important information. And then identity server returns how user needs to authenticate with the identity server based on the configurations that we have done in the application. So currently the user needs to authenticate with the username password um, in the application. If you can remember, that's why it is returning the authenticate as the username password. And also it is returning what are the parameters app needs to pass, which is the username and also the password. So these are some of the important information uh, where our application needs to know and basically pass. So then when the user enter the username password in the application, then application needs to call the next API, which is the, the previous API I need to highlight, which is the O2 authorized endpoint, which is similar to the authorized endpoint in the author authorization code grant flow. The next call is, O2 authentication API. You need to pass the same flow ID, which is a security concern where subsequent call needs to have the same flow ID, which, which we get from here. And the, we need to select the respective authenticator, which is the uh, basic authenticator, this one. And also we need to pass this username password here. These are the parameters we are passing here. So this is a sample account, uh, which is in my local machine. When, when we pass this um, into, into the identity server, you are getting the code, which is similar to the authorization code. Uh, you, you can get in the authorization code grant flow. Then you can basically pass this code into the token endpoint. This is the usual token endpoint with the same, uh, you know, the grant type, uh, authorization code grant type and can pass this code and get the token. This particular flow is, there's nothing different uh, comparing to the uh, authorization code run. Yeah, so just thought of sharing this information uh, as, as uh, additional, you know, the technical information. Right, so let's go back to the uh, next section. Which is the organization manager, right? So, uh, so this is the area uh, which I, I mean, uh, touch base uh, quickly. If you are building a SaaS application, which has different interactions with the other organizations, uh, it may be your customer, partner, reseller, et cetera, where you need allow them to access your resources and where you need allow them to log into your application, where you need to manage the identity and access management and provide the access control to those users. In such case, you need to have different type of organization management, how to onboard organization, and how to basically onboard users under those organization, et cetera, you need to manage. So this is where the B2B SIAM capabilities come into the picture, right? So in, in this particular sample application, you will see how this is, uh, how this is basically working in the real world. So, in the sample application, there is a pet care enterprise company, which is the organization. They have basically a solution for the wet, wet clinics, it's, which is a clinic management solution. 
where different vet clinics can onboard. So these are some of the vet clinics. They can onboard into this solution. And this vet clinic can onboard their users, like their, their, their admins, their staff, like doctors, uh, and also the, their pet owners under their clinic, where doctors can schedule different, uh, you know, the appointments that they, are, they have and uh, owners can see available, uh, you know, the uh, doctor appointments and, and make appointments. So that, that is some sort of a, you know, the uh, a sample use case we have created to demonstrate how this organization management works, right? So let me, let me jump into the, again, uh, to the sample and, and showcase how this is working. Okay, so let me log in again to the uh, Identity Server Developer Console. Right, so if you go into the organization section, so this is where we can onboard these organizations. In this particular case, we can onboard these uh, vet clinics under here. Um, so there are three vet clinics that we have onboarded. Um, there are three vet clinics we have on board. It's one is the city vet hospital, uh, light vet, and the uh, goodwill pet. So if I go into the city vet hospital, we can switch uh, into the um, city vet hospital from here. You can see the now you are in the city vet hospital space of the application. If you go into the user section, these are the users of the city vet hospital, right? And uh, it can have different branding if need. Um, and it can, if you need, if there are use cases to have the hierarchical organization, but in this particular, you know, the business use case, there is no such a thing, but there are situation in the B2B side and there are requirement to have the hierarchical organization where this sub-organization needs to have another organization under the underneath. So they can define the organization as well. So there are limited, um, uh, you know, the options are available under the organization. Um, and, uh, and, if you if I go back to the uh, uh, light pet, um, they have their they have their own users and also the difference is they have their own identity provider. So a light pet uh, has their own identity provider, and uh, they can use this identity provider under their application. So if you if you can see there are limited capabilities available for this particular B2B application where they can add their IDP to login. So if a light pet users are logging there, they can log in using their IDP, right? So if I go back to the super application, uh, super organization, uh, if I go to the application, so this is the um, B2B application, um, if I click here, the difference in the B2B application is how we make the application B2B is, there's a section called shared access, right? So then you can mention to share this application across the organization. So if, if, I, if I go back to the other application, those are not B2B application, those are B2C application. But this is a B2B application we have shared across the old organization. If you have a requirement to uh, selectively share, there's an option as well. You can selectively share the application. There are use cases based on the customer subscription. We share the application uh, selectively. There, you can do that as well, right? So, so the what happened is. Um, on, you know, the you you onboard organizations, then we onboard users under the those different organizations. Then we create the application, which is the B two B application. Then we we share the application with the respective organization based on the requirement. Then the users under these organizations can log into this application. 
when login to the application, we they can log in through the credentials that they have in this particular this particular system, or they can log in through their own IDPs, etc. Right. So let's see how it is working. Um, we have a B two B sample application. Uh, we you can see uh, how it is working. Uh, Sula, can you confirm? Uh, you can see this. Uh, um, yes. New, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So. Uh, so this is the uh, the B two B application. So if I try to log in. So it is asking to enter the organization email. So I'm I'm trying to log in into the CityVet hospital now. So. If I try to log in from the CityVet user, it will automatically, when we enter the email address, it will automatically discover what is the organization user is going to log in. And uh, you can you can basically uh, enter into the this particular organization. This is the application. Uh, you know the the B two B application where they can basically manage users appointments etc right similarly which i mentioned previously uh if i log in from a different organization um let's say a lightweight a lightweight the difference is they have their own identity provider so if i try to log in from one of the using the lightweight so you can see there's an option is there to log in with the lightweight organization right and uh, and there's another uh, feature is available uh, where you can basically have the themings under the sub organization so there is a if you can remember there is a another organization uh, in this particular case veterinic vet clinic is called uh, goodwill pet which has their own uh, uh, theming so if i if you try to log in into the goodwill You can see the theme is changing because they have done a different. Uh, yeah, they have done the you know the different theming onto their organization, and try to log in uh, to the goodwill. You can see a different theming over there, right? So that is uh, the idea needs to uh, you know the explain how the. Uh, uh, the B2B organization management works, how to onboard organizations, uh, how, how to onboard users, how to share the application and how how the, the users from a different organization can access the, uh, you know, the SaaS application, right? Right, so let's uh, go into the uh, next section now. Uh, let me... Right, so the next one is API resource authorization. So API resource authorization is, um, it's all about, um, uh, you know, the how how do you access control your resources, APIs, using uh, uh, role-based access control. So the key highlights are, you can define uh, API resources and also the scopes uh, under the identity server. Uh, and and then uh, these these ap required application can uh, you know the subscribe to these API resources. Then you can define different application specific roles and assign what are the permissions scopes that these roles can access. Then when when user log into the application based on the user's roles. The, the application will, will return a token with the with the scopes associated with these particular roles right so let me let me showcase uh, how this is working so this is a sample uh, you know the the scenario so this is the same b2b application we were talking about so there are two uh, you know the roles associated with this one one is the admin role and the and the other one is the doctor role so if you can see the base on the role there are permission changes happening 
the admin is getting uh, more permission scopes, uh, permissions, or you can refer it as a scope, and then and, and doctor is getting a different set of permissions, right? So let's see how it is, well, how, how do you define these resources, how, how you define these roles, um, and, and assigning to user um, uh, in the application side, okay? So if I go back to the uh, developer console, under the API resource section, you can define your required, um, you know, the API resources. There are predefined uh, application product specific APIs resources also here, but these are the business specific uh, APIs resources. If, you, if, you, if I click over here, you can see what are the set of resources associated with this particular API, right? Then this application can subscribe to these API. So this is the uh, you know the B two B application which I which we you know the you know the discussed previously. Then this application can authorize to whatever the APIs where this application needs to access, which has you know you can see. We have subscribed to few APIs here. Then we can define, if I go into the role section, we can define the application specific roles and assign the respective role, you know, the permissions. So this is a doctor. If you can see the pet care doctor, the pet care doctor can access these permissions. What happens is uh, based on the user's role. If the user is a pet care doctor, yeah, the, this this user gets the you get a token with these scopes, right? So let me quickly uh, uh, jump in in back to the uh, the demo. So this is the same demo. And now I'm trying to log into the uh, application um, with the uh, the admin user of the lightweight. So. So Tom is the um, admin user. So if I log in, you can see this Tom gets many resources be because the admin user has many, uh, you know, the permissions, scopes associated with that role. If I log out and try to log in from the uh, uh, another different uh, type of user, which is a doctor. So the Chris is a doctor, which has limited the uh, number of permissions. So if I try to log in, you can see which which gets very limited uh, number of operations uh, based on the roles, right? So if I if I go here. Um, if I go here and see this doctor is uh, having, you know, these limited number of permissions. If I go back and check the admin, pet care admin role, which is getting, you know, the, having the many number of options, uh, the permissions associated with that. So, so that is how the um, uh, API authorization works. And, and the important thing is, these roles associated with the B2B applications will basically inherit to the sub-organization as well. So when you share the application, that application you can visible here and also the associate roles will be automatically inherit to the sub-organization as well, where sub-organization can assign their users into this uh, you know, the application roles, right? So yeah, this is uh, what we uh, plan to do. Um, Sula, uh, is there any, if there are any questions? Um... Thanks for the uh, wonderful session. Uh, one thing, yeah, we have seen uh, there are many enhancements that WSO2 product team did uh, on the latest version of WSO2, which is seven. Uh, one suggestion from our side, uh, Probably these terminologies are a bit changed from previous versions to the latest version. Uh, like your connection, uh, uh, identity providers are changed to connections, service providers are uh, changed to applications. 
probably somewhere in the documentation if we can capture the latest terminologies mapping to old terminologies that would help developers that's one thing and second thing uh, how to onboard existing legacy applications such as uh, uh, say that my uh, customer is having applications which are running in .NET, which is working uh, with a header-based uh, 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 authentication. Okay, that they require just a header-based. Previously, they might be using some other user stores like uh, LDAP or EAD. So now they want to integrate with uh, uh, WSO2. But that application uh, uh, don't want to do major changes. Rather, they just require a header. So for that kind of uh, integrations, right now we are relaying a third-party products like uh, Nginx Plus, where that can work as a reverse proxy along with the WSO2. So probably if you can consider uh, uh, bringing legacy applications to WSO2 without much changes at uh, uh, um, existing legacy applications, that would help uh, to bring more and more customers into this product without relying on a third party products like Nginx Plus, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the same thing with uh, uh, your .NET applications also, uh, where those are hosted on IIS. Okta and other kind of uh, uh, IAM products has uh, 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 some agents called IIS agents, where wherever a user changes their passwords, so that will uh, forefront your uh, uh, identity and it will, uh, send the changes to identity server or whatever identity provider it will be. So that kind of uh, plugins probably uh, we have to consider thinking through in our uh, roadmap. Uh, that yep. would help bringing uh, uh, things into WSO2 quickly rather than we write custom code every time. Uh, third thing, uh, in the browser-based authentication, since the WSO2 login page has uh, uh, most of the functionalities already in built like your session management, token in, uh, introspection, all those things. So most of the times we prefer to use a WSO2 identity service uh, uh, login page. But however, this 9443 uh, or uh, that port, we, we are not able to uh, come out of that port because that redirection has to happen. If it is, nine, if it is not 9443, probably using offset, we might have to use some other port but we want to get out of that port. That is not possible at all because your authentication endpoint has to rely on the uh, default uh, ports that WSO2 is generating 9443 or 9444. Rather, we don't want that port. So is there any solution for that? Right. Uh, this is uh, Sharat, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sharat, thanks. Uh, thanks for your feedback and also, uh, you know, the few great questions. So I, I will go one by one. Mm -hmm. So, so the applications connections, you are right. Uh, the previous, uh, you know, the identity server versions, uh, we, we use more technical term, I should say, like service providers, identity providers kind of. Agreed. Yeah. More, more, more technical term. Yeah. But we are trying to move into a more user-friendly term. That is the reason we, we basically rename into the applications connections etc you are yeah. right uh, we, uh, we we will um, we will need to improve the uh, you know the maybe mapping um, uh, uh, you know the especially uh, the the users who are migrating from the previous versions um, needs to understand there are scripts etc available uh, for the migrations um, but but for the documentation point of view um, I, I agree uh, so we, we will need to enhance the documentation side so the other thing is the um, uh, so the legacy based application um, area so um, th 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 there are different uh, patterns um, we can use because the reason is the when it comes to the legacy applications it is not something the same you know the level of uh, authentication it is using there are n number of uh, you know the different uh, authentication mechanism that we have seen in the industry especially when it comes to the legacy application. One is a proxy pattern you, you mentioned where the, 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 the legacy application is basically interacting with the proxy and the proxy basically build the trust with the identity server to communicate with the standard protocols, right? Um, it may be OpenID, Connect, or SAML. That is a one pattern. The other area we can explore is um, uh, 
we we are going to introduce a new uh, extension architecture into the product uh, where you can basically uh, build the particular you know that a different any different type of protocol just outside the product right so so the we are, we are not going to add the whatever the extensions into the product itself to make the 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 existing product complicated because the problem is then we have to when it is migrating there are a lot of complexities are there but this particular different type of authentication mechanism we are trying to take it outside the product we are we have it will give the flexibility to integrate you know the different type of legacy applications so that is one of the area i can highlight um related to the legacy application you know the uh, integrations um browser login uh, thing what you mentioned um, not sure i clearly understood but but um, what wh what you can clearly do is uh, using the uh, so the runtime will have the 9443 right but there will be a load balancer in front of that which yeah. will basically serve the traffic uh, with the 43 uh, you know the 443 which is the https port mm -hmm. route the traffic into the whatever the underneath port which is not which is not a problem right because the 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 end user is always seeing the load balancer and the particular host name associate with that uh, you know the domain name associate with that Mm -hmm. And uh, you can you can use the uh, nine four four three and and also you can uh, change the offset as well. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, uh, Godwin, we we tried for fronting nginx uh, uh, in front of uh, is, but your authentication endpoint uh, yeah. uh, has to get redirected uh, to the identity yeah. provider, uh, yeah. provider, right? So that's where we uh, again that uh, that authentication endpoint is towards your nine four four three. Yes. Okay. So th that is um, oh, okay. You are you are talking about uh, the when the when the identity server runtime. Yeah. To re do the redirection, right? Exactly. Yeah. So okay. So the, the when you configure the host name, when you are configuring the you know the load balance of host name, there is a way of redirecting into the into the product, not to the nine four four three. There mm -hmm. is a reverse proxy configuration where you can do it in the product, which will not redirect into the 9443, which will redirect into the, you know, the the the, the load balance uh, uh, domain name without the port. There is an option to configure on that one. Okay. If you have any uh, blocks or uh, uh, nodes yeah. towards that, if you can share, that would really help. Yeah. 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 Um, so just uh, carrying on with the questions, because I know we're a bit sensitive on time as well, and I want to um I take the other open questions so uh Gada, there's a question from uh one of our attendees is the login button for federated idps customizable uh, within brackets login or ui for those federated idps that are not commercial not facebook google etc yes so uh, is it is it about the um is it about the change in the the logo? Okay, so it it, it has mentioned right the logo UI. So the currently, if it is um, if it is not a uh, you know the standard one like coming with the product, which is the Facebook, Google, etc. Which if it is a you know the, the a different IDP, then from the UI itself you can't customize. But there is an option if you really need to customize. We have option custom theming. Under the branding, there's a custom theming is there. So using the custom theming, you can modify the logo, UI, etc. If you really need to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next question is: uh, Is it possible to define different templates for login and email in every application? Yes. Okay. So the currently, um, uh, currently this application, uh, you know, the the branding is global. Uh, which is which means it is for the organization level, which means the root organization or the sub organization. Sub -organization. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, we have done the recently based on a customer requirement. We have done this particular improvement uh, to to have the uh, 
application based email template and the uh, UI template through the APIs and and which will be available uh, uh, which is available for the actually the updates um, under the updates and that will be available uh, in the next May, next uh, release for the open source users. All right, thank you. And the next one is also, is it possible to remove the WS2 footer from the login page branding? Um, login page branding, you can, uh, okay, hold on for a while. Uh, you, I hope you are referring to the, uh, um, yeah, so, so this particular one, okay, so this, Put a section. Um, if you need to, so you can change the, so the footer section comes with the, you know, the, these configurations, right? So if you need to do any change on that one uh, or remove that one, you can modify this one. Or else if you need to totally different one, then we need to go into a, uh, this custom theming option. Yep. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, the 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 root of that question was for security yep. reasons as yep. one of uh, really yep. um, All right, and uh, we have another one, which is that: uh, is it possible to have different logs, uh, log files for every single application? Sort of logs for application. Right. So these are more, I, as I understood, these are more like audit logs, uh, where we need to do the auditing application base mm -hmm. uh, that is why I, what that is what i understood i mean from the product point of view we have the single audit log which will have the all the logs so how we position is um, we need to publish this log into the log analyzing tool where this log analyzing tool can have the separation of different application right so we are using the same uh, terminology in our you know the saas based solution as well we are we are publishing these logs and uh, and then we can basically uh, based on the content that we have in the uh, logs we can categorize application based uh, login using that thank you and the last question which is at the top of the hour is the native mobile app authentication via api the way it is implemented in ws2 according to auth2 or open id connect official or beta specification has it been validated by a third by a security third party with penetration testing? Very good question. Um, so we actively participate um, with the uh, O2 uh, uh, the, the 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 working community because there is a draft specification is going on, which is the first part in native application authentication, but that is still in the draft spec draft level, which is not released. But we are we actually um, trying to follow the same draft specification by adding some more features into that. And um, the reason is when the draft becoming uh, you know the RFC, we we, are, we can basically easy, easily uh, have the backward compatibility and move into the more spec uh, compliant uh, implementation. So the from the security point of view, we we internally have a different uh, security uh, you know the body where basically validate the security aspects of the platform which, which is not only the identity server it is this whole platform they have certain processes how to make sure which is uh, having the right security and they are doing the threat modeling etc for the each and every you know the 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 features that we are releasing in the product we we have gone through all these uh, you know, the security best practices to release this particular feature from the product point of view. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Um, so I think with that, we bring to a close the Q&A section of the IS7 release webinar. And again, thank you for uh, the participation and engagement. Uh, thank you, Godwin, for taking the time and setting up everything to take the audience through. Um, this will be, of course, available on demand as well and will be accessible. And like we mentioned, if there is anything that you need to clarify from an identity point of view, please do reach out to us uh, uh, via our website or any of our other socials. And we'd be more than happy to 
uh, help you with your identity clarifications or needs and, and see how WC2 can be part of your project. Uh, thank you very much and have a pleasant rest of the day and uh, rest of the week as well. Thank you.